<laughs> I wasn't able to choose between uh, these two for the second one, so I have a poem about chemicals, <laughs> and I have a short story about uh, sort of a haunting, also Ooh. maybe uh, some ghosts or gods or something. So, uh... Read both, you've got time. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> the poem is short. Um, I'll do that first, I guess. Uh, Angela sent me a writing prompt a couple weeks ago for my Patreon uh, and said, I would like you to write about uh, how baking soda and water <laughs> Uh, deodorizes water bottles. <laughs> it was on a playing card with, with hiking tips in New Zealand. So, so I was like, okay, that'll be fun. Uh, so this is uh, pure substance. Is that sugar? My daughter asked in a hopeful timbre, her eyes reminding me she was still toiling under the strict anti-fructose regimen that I had imposed. She continued to judge me as guilty. No, I said lightly, hunting for my measuring cups. Just baking soda, kiddo. She glanced at the mixing bowl suspiciously as only a six-year-old could. What's it for? So I geared up, and we spoke of bread, provoked until its eventual uprising. A doughy manifest destiny for cakes and cookies, one that could soothe skin furious from pollen and peanut attacks, and restore balance to a swimming pool's gentle bearing. I held the cup in front of her and told tales of a powder with fortitude enough to remove paint, to suffocate fire, and to prove victorious over a species that not even nuclear war could extinguish. She gaped at me, my precocious child, sizing up the power that resides under our sink. And as the spigot turned and a mob mixing bowl began to fill, I asked how many names she knew for water. I know what water is, Daddy, she frowned, unable to conceive of how a person with my level of incompetence was allowed to operate a kitchen <laughs> unneeded. We drink it and we use it for baths. I knew that when I was three. And while well, she sang true, for I had witnessed these conquests, I explained, with much gesticulating, how what she drank out of a licensed cartoon character mug also grew the world's crops, fed humanity, calmed equipment that kept our lights burning into the dark, carried people and their goods across the seas, and could destroy cities and civilizations with its terrible anger. My daughter shook her barrette and stared at the mixture I'd created, ruminating on the secret she held. But you combined them, she said. Baking soda and water, what does that do? She squirmed with excitement, imagining how she would save the earth with an instrument of pure might and ample versatility. Well, I said, actually, I, I use it to clean the oven. <laughs> she blinked. A mistake had been made. <laughs> A moment later, she held court in her sandbox, planning much more efficient applications, and I hoped that the world was ready. So this is the short story, uh, which I think some people might have heard before, but it was a while ago, and hopefully it will be new to you. Um, it's called uh, Conservus. Amanda hadn't noticed exactly when the children arrived, which was unusual because she was accustomed to juggling multiple observations like plates balanced on a uniformed circus seal. As the assistant senior concierge for the Safato Hotel on 44th Street, located within walking distance of the world-famous Times Square, scenic Central Park, and the renowned shopping district on Fifth Avenue, she was required to practice omniscience and omnipresence at all times, or at least have the professional courtesy to fake it convincingly. So far that week, in between dispensing advice about five-star restaurants and Broadway show tickets, she procured a bathtub full of Amade porcelana chocolate, arranged for signed photos of Nicolas Cage to preside over a guest's bathroom, Conair specifically, Hollyman and Vegas optionally, rented a llama and dressed it as Boba Fett, 
and ensured that the strawberries waiting in a hip-hop star's suite were all the same dimensions. She asked as few questions as possible. But it was midday now, the afternoon hullabaloo still a few hours away, and she could afford to relax just a little. Foot traffic bustled through the hallways. Guests swam in from the street, craning their necks to take in the spiral staircase, the artistically tiled flooring, all the minute expert-approved details of the pageantry that the entire staff worked diligently to maintain. Her eyes swept the lobby. The children, a wiry boy of perhaps six or seven, and a girl, presumably his sister, a year younger, were fidgeting in the business area's pristine leather seats, no accompanying adults in sight. The girl, whose t-shirt featured dinosaurs conducting lab experiments in space, murmured something intently to her companion while rummaging through a messenger bag the size of Wyoming. He rebuked her with the indisputable authority of an elder sibling engraved on his face, the divine right of the older brother. He pointed towards Amanda and slid off his seat on a holy mission. Amanda adjusted her heels. Please let this not be a thing. Maybe they just needed directions to the restaurant or to take an emergency afternoon helicopter jaunt with Katy Perry. <laughs> they were kids and wouldn't have been able to book a room, but if the concierge desk had taught her anything, it was that predictable expectations were for other people. He materialized at her elbow. Excuse me, good afternoon. I, I know you're busy, but we need help, my sister and I. Would you come over for a minute? Yes, of course, I'll be right there. Excellent, I appreciate your assistance. The boy tucked his shirt in and strode back to his seat, probably to review the stock portfolio while he waited. A fervent exchange erupted between the siblings, and Amanda crossed over. She stood directly in front of the girl, who seemed to barely notice. The five-year-old scanned the room, her head oscillating like facial recognition mode had been activated. Amanda warmed her most charming smile and shone it on the girl's face, crouching down to meet her at eye level. Hi, my name is Amanda. I'm here to help. Are you lost? Are your parents staying at this hotel? No. Damn it. She could hear the future paperwork collating. She wasn't afraid of challenges. It, it was just that sometimes the weight of her student loans, four years breathing topography and molding pixels, the shadow that passed over her when she glimpsed brilliant designs and remembered they might have been hers if her trajectory had veered just a few degrees in a different direction at exactly the right time. All of it coalesced into a pressure point that drums steadily on. Somehow this exciting two-year opportunity to go for the bizarre and the impractical had slowly metamorphosized into a five-year stint that both left, left her bank account and her chi resentful. Pampering was only what she did, not who she was. The frozen life her brain had cultivated still existed, and she was going to get back there someday. Amanda brushed her internal diatribe aside and faced the boy. Okay, your, your sister's a bit shy, so you can tell me what's going on. She steals. She's been at it for days. I don't understand. He helped his sister to her feet, and Amanda's face formed a question. The girl had been sitting on at least two dozen Sofitel customer satisfaction comment cards. Amanda chortled, relieved. Well, listen, I, I know it was difficult to come tell me, but you're not in any trouble. I'll put these back for you and no harm done, okay? It was the girl who answered. It's not just the cards, it's everything. Her face was ashen, terrified. They need everything, they won't tell me why. I don't know what it's for. She plowed through her carnivorous bag, pausing to present Amanda with each item. A pair, a pair of iBud, iPod earbuds still in the packaging, a Snickers, shopper loyalty cards, chapstick, a weathered Best Buy receipt, a coupon for 50% off the leading brand of detergent, a feather, $5 bill, two postcards, an unopened Zen mini kit, a fridge magnet commemorating Duran Duran's 1999 Let It Flow tour, and God only knew what else. The concierge blinked. Where did you get people's cars, offices, garbage cans, the floor, 
They say every piece is a monument to their greatness and will be important when it starts. When, when what starts? Who's telling you to steal this junk? Except for the earbuds, most of these things look like they came from the bottom of someone's purse. It's only junk because it's what I could find. If there was something better around, I'd steal that too. Do you know the man who's asking you to steal? The girl gawped at her. I never see their faces. I don't think they're men. Her brother demonstrably glared, making sure Amanda knew he didn't hold with any of this top flurry. Would you please communicate to my sister that this type of behavior is grossly unacceptable and that her imagination is causing her to act inappropriately? You're an adult. She'll listen to you. Then, to his sister, this has persisted long enough. You have to stop stealing. I can't, she whispered, her eyes massive and pleading. They won't like it. They already said I couldn't tell anyone. Amanda smiled reassuringly and dove into her purse for her cell, having no concept whatsoever of who she was going to call. And then, one by one, the lights went out until the lobby was shrouded in darkness. The children shivered. Amanda whipped backwards like a paper chain garland in a gale force wind, but her vision was blurred. Parenthesia set, her feet rooting to the Italian marble tile, and puzzlement swept in, enveloping her from every corner. Outside, no one glanced at the hotel. West 44th Street hummed on with the dynamic, perpetual, nondescript sounds of the center of the universe. That's probably the weirdest thing I've ever written. <laughs> uh, there's there's a great um, blog uh, called How May We Hate You, and it's it's about two concierges in New York City, and they had posted one day they had a a, a boy and a girl come in, both very young. And the brother said uh, to the girl, stop stealing things. And the girl, like terrified, said, I can't. And I was like, that would be a great time for us to <laughs>